Uh, this is going to be the eighth annual Charles Porter Lecture. We like to remember Charles. He was a great person, loved learning, loved life. And um, this year it will be Dr. Gr uh, Professor Graham Hughes. Uh, Professor Hughes is head of the London Lupus Center at London Bridge Hospital. He's a founder and editor of the Lupus Journal. He's professor of medicine at St. Thomas Hospital. Uh, he qualified at London Hospital. He um, worked in uh, New York with uh, Charles Christian at Columbian Presbyterian Hospital. And they worked on anti-DNA assays that we were just talking about. In uh, 71, he went to Hammersmith Hospital and replaced uh, uh, retiring uh, Dr. Professor Eric Bywaters, he became head of rheumatology and reader in medicine. He set up the first uh, dedicated lupus clinic in uh, Europe. And then he was the founder and head of the St. Thomas Lupus Clinic and Lupus Research Unit. He has over 900 research publications. Uh, nine books, editorial board of 23 journals, and he's winner of the ILAR International Prize for Rheumatology Research. And I, I also forgot to mention there, I think 1983, described antiphospholipid antibody uh, syndrome, which is called Hughes syndrome, and he's going to talk today about that topic. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's, it's a privilege to be given the honor of giving this talk. I actually uh, met Charles Porter, I think in the mid-80s, when I came for the weekend meeting that uh, Birmingham used to hold in, in the country. A very, very memorable experience that was. Um, I, I chose to change the title of this talk to Tuesday, and I'm going to explain why. But um, just a little word of introduction. This is where I now work. That lovely Art Deco building on the right is the London Bridge Hospital. It's situated um, between, on the Pool of London between two bridges, the Tower Bridge and right under here, the London Bridge. And we set up a, a lupus clinic, which is now seeing 400 lupus patients every month. So it's an immense, uh, with 10 physicians. So it's, it's a, an immense factory, if you like, but a very pleasant place to work. It's the best kept Art Deco building in London. And, uh, this is an open invitation to any of you in London to come have coffee. We think we have the best coffee in, in the hospital. <laughs> um, thank you for inviting me. I got in late last night and even now look as if I'm going to enjoy the next 48 hours. It's, it, it's, it's great fun to be amongst friends. But I'm going to talk on a very clinical basis today, and I make no apologies for that. I'm going to give the title of Tuesday and Tuesday morning in particular. And the reason for that, I'll show you in two seconds. The antiphospholipid syndrome is getting old now. It's 1983, which we described in over 200 patients. The clinical description, which is characterized by, uh, very exciting for us, arterial thrombosis as well as venous thrombosis, uh, and in, of course, pregnancy, recurrent miscarriage. And the people describing that syndrome, a number of them now work in the States. Nigel Harris has moved over to the Caribbean. But it was a very interesting time because over the years in lupus, as you know, there had been descriptions of thrombosis associated with various things. I think William Osler was the first to describe the antiphospholipid syndrome. Because he described a physician who had a stroke and, uh, in retrospect, probably had antiphospholipid antibodies. In those days, we had the dreadful lupus anticoagulant test, which really is, is a pain, as you know. Um, but we set up more specific immunoassays for antiphospholipid antibodies. And the description very much, I think, stands now as it did then. But the ripples are spreading wider every year. In my clinic, we see more patients with antiphospholipid syndrome referred than we do lupus. And I'm sticking my neck out, and I think that as cardiologists recognize the syndrome, orthopedists, and so on, we will be seeing more and more, and I hope to explain why. This was from the original description in the Brit British Journal of oh, Clinical and Experimental Dermatology. Other features are headaches, migraine, epilepsy, chorea, multiple abortions, peripheral thrombosis, demyelinating disease, which I'm going to come back to, 
Budd-Chiari syndrome. It's now known to be the second commonest cause after lymphoma of Budd-Chiari syndrome and renal vein thrombosis. This was our team, as you've heard from the chairman, in, in Hammersmith Hospital back in 1983. And the, uh, the main worker uh, is Aziz Garavi, sadly, who died. Aziz was an outstanding physician who um, joined me, something of a refugee from Iran. And uh, it was during the time of the first big revolution there. I, I can't remember the, the year, but 1981 or two, when he joined me. Um, a strict Muslim, but he used to brew the beer in our laboratory. <laughs> um, there's, there's a true story, which, as is sadly deceased, will be looking down on me now, but we were looking at ENA, and as you know, you have ground up spleen extract. And we couldn't find screen spleens in big enough quantities until somebody recommended the local abattoir, Walls Abattoir, near Hammersmith. And as is, who was semi-legal, not sure of his status in the country at that time, volunteered to get the spleen. So in his de chevaux with his wife, drove round to the abattoir, which they filled with a bucket of blood and spleens floating, drove out of the factory and was involved in a head-on collision. Um, spleens all over the road and so on. Uh, as he's refused to talk about that ever since. <laughs> so the features you all know, and I'm not going to bore you with them, just two slides, the DVT up to 30% in some series of DVTs entering hospital casualty departments have antiphospholipid antibodies. So venous thrombosis, peripheral and organ, yes. We, we, at the Hammersmith, uh, was a terrible old hospital. I don't know if those of you who've been with it, you've heard about the National Health Service. This is a characteristic NHS hospital with uh, cockroaches and the jail next door, Wormwood Scrubs. But this was uh, Princess Di, who really put a lot into lupus in the United Kingdom behind scenes. It was part of her tremendous uh, help with medical problems and her sensitivity. And that's one of my registrars, Charles Mackworth Young, who wrote the first paper associating epilepsy with antiphospholipid syndrome. I like this quote because when you're trying to apply for grants, you're trying to push the importance of your own syndrome. And uh, Villardel, who's the dean of medicine in Barcelona, said there are two major new diseases of the late 20th century, AIDS and antiphospholipid syndrome. In many ways, we're, we're feeling that at the moment. The biggest story for many, of course, has been the obstetric story, the total change in the outcome of these women who have one, two, five, eight, 12, 14 miscarriages, and tragedy, uh, also late pregnancies as well. And once a year at our hospital, now St. Thomas's, we have a party for women and babies who, this lady is the one who'd had, I think, eight miscarriages and now has twins, thanks to heparin and aspirin. And, and this party is great fun for some, not, not for me, it's jelly and vomiting and, and that sort of stuff. <laughs> we know more about the science now, and um, the, the, this, this week there is the international meeting here in the States on antiphospholipid meeting. I think it's now, Joan, I've forgotten, it's in its 13th, uh, meeting every two to three years. We know something about the biology. It's wrongly named. It's not antiphospholipid because antibodies don't react with phospholipid. They react with proteins. And we now know that the antigen is a complex of phospholipid, uh, a, a carrier protein, uh, the, the main ones being beta 2. This is beta 2 and the fifth domain is the site where the alleged binding takes place. Um, Prothrombin is another carrier protein. So the science is becoming more complex in many ways. And just to bring you up to date, one of the um, international meetings, uh, the meeting that's being held in Galveston this, this week, the previous one uh, it was the lupus meeting in Sh Shanghai. And this is just one paper from Shanghai um, by Takeo Koike, who's one of the leaders in the field uh, from Sapporo in Japan. The P38 MAP kinase signaling pathway plays an important role in APL-induced tissue factor expression on monocytes. Well, that's just one of many putative mechanisms that have been described. But this is interesting because, of course, we're very limited to three drugs, aspirin, heparin, coumadin, warfarin. And, and people are, are looking at possible therapeutic targets, as they have in lupus. So, so much for the background to the antiphospholipid syndrome. 
Every Tuesday, 